There is no great novel about New York. There is no single novel. There are a lot of very good New York novels. Um, but there's no single all-encompassing novel the way um, you could look at any number of Dickens books and say we know London as a result of that. I thought that probably the best novel of New York was the newspaper. If you sat down and read the newspapers, you'd get some gauge of what we'd gone through. And the reason is because it's dynamic. The reason is because it's of its dailiness. There's a dailiness to life in the city, a sense of surprise. It's the kind of a city that, although it insists on routine from a lot of its people, um, knows that routine is, is, a, is a utopian goal <laughs> and that some other thing is going to happen between here and 57th Street. You better be ready for it. The flight was a bold and perilous one, but here I am in the great city of New York, safe and sound without loss of blood or bone. In less than a week after leaving Baltimore, I was walking amid the hurrying throng and gazing upon the dazzling wonders of Broadway. The dreams of my childhood and the purpose of my manhood were now fulfilled. A free state around me and a free earth under my feet. What a moment this was to me, Frederick Douglass. April, 1842. Who does not know that our city is the great place of the Western continent? The heart, the brain, the focus, the main spring, the no more beyond of the new world. Walt Whitman. In the spring of 1841, 22-year-old Walt Whitman arrived in Manhattan looking for work as a newspaper man. The son of a failed carpenter from Brooklyn, whose own mother thought him a good boy, but very strange. He was one of the tens of thousands of newcomers streaming in each year to find work in the city. The energy of the metropolis broke over him like a thunderstorm. This is the city, he wrote ecstatically, and I am one of its citizens. Silence. What can New York, noisy, roaring, rumbling, tumbling, bustling, turbulent New York, have to do with silence? Amid the universal clatter, the all-swallowing vortex of the great money whirlpool, who has any even distant idea of the profound repose of silence? Walt Whitman. He took to the city instantly and soon found work at a paper called the Aurora, one of the dozens of new penny papers springing up all over the island. There had never been anything like them, sold on the streets for a penny apiece by gangs of ragged boys. They were filled not with sober shipping reports, but with eye-catching stories of crime, vice, and sex, often drawn from the streets of the city itself. Of them all, none was more popular than the New York Herald, founded in 1835 by a bombastic Scottish immigrant named James Gordon Bennett. Fond of comparing himself in the pages of his own journal to Julius Caesar, Shakespeare, and Alexander the Great. Up until the 1830s, newspapers had very small circulation, they were quite expensive, and they were always effectively owned by one political party. It was James Gordon Bennett who changed all that. He put all the ideas together and came up with the New York Herald, which became the most successful newspaper in the world. It was very low priced, it was politically independent, and it was written not with the idea of instructing the reader with what he ought to know, but with giving the reader what he wanted to know. Modern journalism had begun. In its first two weeks alone, the Herald ran blood-curdling accounts 
of three suicides, three murders, a fire that killed five people, and an accident in which a man had blown his own head off. Monday, February 1st, 1841. There is a paper published in this city. I am not in the habit of quoting from it, for I consider it a disgrace. Nor would I do it now, but to protest against the depraved and vitiated taste of newspaper readers. It is an undeniable fact that this filthy sheet has a wider circulation than any other, not only here, but in other cities. Philip Hohn. Reporters like Whitman went everywhere, covering the spectacular fires that broke out with increasing frequency now, and the epidemics of cholera that ravaged the increasingly congested slums. From the imposing ramparts of the new Croton waterworks way out on 42nd Street, to the dizzying spire of newly rebuilt Trinity Church, the tallest structure in town. The vast and interminable city was spread out as upon a map before us. There, beneath our feet, and stretching far away in every direction, lay one of the most beautiful and exciting spectacles ever looked upon, the New York Morning News. By the 1830s and 1840s, the city is so complicated. The city has got so much ethnic diversity, economic uh, differences, social differences that people increasingly need a newspaper to help them to decode the city, to figure out what's going on. Here's a place where every day I can get a handle on what's actually going on, uh, and I can get some sense uh, of order um, to what's becoming a very disorderly place. In less than a decade, more than 20 dailies and dozens of weeklies had crowded into a five-block stretch across from City Hall called Printing House Row along with Samuel Morse's new telegraph office and Matthew Brady's new photographic studio. By 1841, the bustling district around City Hall had become the center of news and information for the entire nation. Remember, at that period, we're talking still about a kind of walking city. That is to say, in a very, very small area, maybe a couple of miles, you could see the amazing contrasts that are growing up, even within a few blocks. If you think about where City Hall is, the center of government, you think about where Wall Street is, the center of commerce, and then you think about the five points, the sort of worst slum uh, of the era, they're all pretty much within the stone's throw of each other. And then if you include the emerging commercial entertainments like Barnum's Museum and so on, you can see that, that really within a very, very small area, you have all these amazing contrasts uh, of wealth and poverty, of high culture and low culture, of different ethnic uh, and racial groups. And all that stuff really in a fairly contained area. 